Hello my lovelies! Today I have another book haul for you, so stay tuned. So I have acquired 15 more books, so I thought I would do a little haul and show you what I got. Uh, yeah, so the first one, two, three, four, five, six have come from unboxings that I've done. I don't think the videos have posted yet of those unboxings, but you get to see the haul. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this first book, I actually have two of the same book, just different editions. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do about it just yet, if I'm going to keep both editions or if I'm going to get rid of one of them. Uh, but this came in two different boxes. And that is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. So I have this edition and I have this edition. Now I think this is the regular one. Uh, this came from, I'm not sure which box, uh, but the end pages, they look like this. The book looks like that. And there is a signed book plate as well. But then this one, I think this was unplugged maybe. And this one was a uh, bookish box, I think. Uh, but anyway, this one looks like so. And it has these beautiful stenciled edges. The end pages match the stenciled edges. And then the book. The book looks like this, y'all. It's so pretty. And it has a reversible jacket as well. Yeah, this is the bookish box. As far as the dust jackets go, I actually prefer this dust jacket over this dust jacket. But the naked book, I prefer the bookish box one more. But they're not the same size, so I can't just swap them out because... This one is shorter and not as wide. Okay, so let me tell you about this one. I think this is a mythology retelling. It says, Isolde de Lara considers her wedding day to be her death day. In a years long war and protect the people of her kingdom, she is to marry the vampire king. Adrian Alexander Veselive and kill him. But her assassination attempt is thwarted and Adrian warns that if Isolde tries to kill him again, he will raise her as the undead. Faced with the possibility of becoming the thing she hates most, Isolde seeks other ways to defy him and survive the violence and political machinations of Adrian's brutal vampire court. Except it isn't the court she ends up fearing the most, it's Adrian and her intense attraction to him. Wrapped in mystery and a past he refuses to discuss, Adrian nevertheless starts to become less of a monster to Isolde. Despite their undeniable chemistry, Isolde can't help but wonder why the king, fierce, complicated, ambitious, and at times inexplicably tender, chose her as a consort. The answer will shatter her world. And I am very, very interested. Okay, next up we have My Fine Fellow by Janeki Cohen. And this one, I think, was also unplugged. I'm not entirely certain, though. This says, in 1830s England, Calarians, doyens who create gorgeous food and confections for the elite, are the creme de la creme of high society. Helena Higgins, top of her class at the Royal Academy, has a sharp demeanor and an even sharper palate, and no stardom awaits her, if she can produce greatness in her final year. Penelope Pickering is going to prove the value of non-European cuisine to all of England. Her contemporaries may scorn her Filipina heritage and her dishes, but with her flawless social graces and culinary talents, Penelope is set to prove them wrong. Elijah Little has nothing to his name but a truly excellent instinct for flavors. London merchants won't allow a Jewish boy to own a shop, so he hawks his pasties for a shilling apiece to pa passers-by. But he knows with training he can break into the highest echelon of society. When Penelope and Helena meet Elijah, 
A golden opportunity arises to pull off a project never seen before and turn Elijah from a street vendor to a gentleman chef. But Elijah's transformation will have a greater impact on this trio than they originally realized. And mayhem and seemingly faux pas and a little romance will all be a part of the delicious recipe. Um, uh, let's see what this one looks like. Yeah. Okay, this next book here I am so excited for. Like, it sounds so good. That is Into the Blood Red Woods by Martha Brockenborough. And I just, I love this cover so much. And it's got the imprint of the title here too. This says, Once upon a time, there was a kingdom and a forest that liked to eat men and a girl who could change everything, but not alone. Except there's no such thing as once upon a time. In a faraway land populated by werebeasts and surrounded by powerful forests lies a kingdom about to be sent into chaos. On his deathbed, King Tyron divides his land, leaving half to each of his two children, so they'll rule together. However, his son, Albrecht, is not satisfied with half a kingdom. And even though his sister, Ursula, is the firstborn, he decides that as a girl and a werebear, she is unfit to rule. So he invades her land, slaughtering her people and most of the werebeasts, and claims it for himself. As Albrecht builds his iron rule and an army to defend his reign, Ursula is gathering the survivors and making plans to seize the kingdom back. Not just her half, the whole thing. Because Albrecht should have never been allowed to sit on the throne, and Ursula is going to take his crown. And if he's not careful, he might not get to keep his head either. I'm very excited for this. Okay, next up is another beautiful edition of one of the bookish boxes books, and that is Autumn's Tithe by Hannah Parker. And the dust jacket is pretty, but the stenciled edges also match this design. It's beautiful. Ooh. The end pages look like this, and the book without the jacket. It's so pretty. It looks like this. I am a sucker for all this beautiful foiling. And then it also has a reversible jacket as well, which looks like so. So this says, Every girl in Balamar dreams of being chosen by the Fae. For some reason, because the Fae promised to deliver them to the beautiful fairy realm, for Larkin, because her closest friend was chosen the previous year, she tries to accept her fate until she discovers that her friend is in danger and the promise of eternal joy amongst the Fae could be a lie. Larkin breaks the sacred covenant between humans and Fae and enters the fairy realm to find her friend. Her only ally is Finder, a fairy prince of the Autumn Court who now owes her a debt after she unwittingly saves his life. Their bond is both the something to her survival uh that word actually is cut off so i can't see what it says and possibly her downfall underneath the glittering facade of the fairy realm that sees a shadowy packed right in blood written blood a betrayal and lust for power at any cost a tithe must be paid by each of the courts of Arid eridion both Finder and Larkin's people face retribution if the tithe goes unpaid, and their bond could destroy the foundation of the courts and the human world forever. Alright. Okay, then the last book that came in a subscription box, uh, I believe this was in one of my unplugged book boxes, and that is A Curse in Ash by Julie Xantopoulos, and it looks like this. And if you don't know, Julie is also a booktuber as well as an author, and her channel is Pages and Pens, and I will link her down below. Uh, but yeah, this is her debut novel, and it's very exciting. Anyway, uh, this says, Everyone knows you don't mess with Faye on a new moon, but the Faye that Aisling Quinn deals with don't need a thin veil to cross and jeopardize her carefully created life. As a powerful witch, she's battled for agency and realms determined to control her. Now she has a circle of friends she loves, a job where she excels, and a craft she's perfecting. 
enter a handsome stranger magically linked to her and the fae fiance who won't leave her side until threats against her life stop as if that will ever happen. Aislinn is trained her in magic use, self-defense, and secrecy, but no amount of training prepared her for a curse that hits so close to home. Then again, she never anticipated having two men by her side ready to fight and die with her. With a diverse cast of characters and no shortage of danger or romance, the explosive world of A Curse and Ash, the first in an adult contemporary fantasy series, will leave you breathless for more. Okay, these next six books are actually ones that I ordered from a Kickstarter thing. Uh, the books have actually already been out, uh, I think in paperback form, but the author did these beautiful hardcover editions that she offered on Kickstarter. I'm guessing they'll be available later uh, to anybody else, but uh, I wanted to get these beautiful covers. And these are smutty, BDSM, Disney After Dark kind of retellings. So the first one we have here is Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. This is a, this is Jasmine and Jafar where Prince Ali is not a good guy. Uh, and it's Jasmine and Jafar together. And oh we, this is steamy. So this, the whole series is super, super steamy. And this will make you like Jafar. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very smutty. Then we have book two, which is Learn My Lesson, which is Hades, Hercules, and Meg. Then we have A Worthy Opponent, which is Tink and Captain Hook, or Tink and Hook. And then we have The Beast, which is Belle, Beast, and Gaston. The Sea Witch, which is Eric, Ursula, and Ariel. And Queen Takes the Rose, which I believe is uh, Aurora and Maleficent. Okay, these next two books are books that I ordered, I think, from Amazon. I believe it was Amazon. Uh, so it's books one and two of the series, Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellaflor. So we have Written in the Stars and Hang the Moon. So Written in, Star, Written in the Stars is the first book. And this says, in her debut with nods to Bridget Jones' Diary and Pride and Prejudice, Alexandra Bellaflor delivers a charming rom-com about a free-spirited astrologer who agrees to a fake relationship with an uptight actuary with results not even the stars could predict. After a disastrous blind date, Darcy Lowell is desperate to stop her well-meaning brother from playing matchmaker ever again. Love and the inevitable heartbreak is the last thing she wants, so she fibs and says her latest setup was a success. Darcy doesn't expect her lie to bite her in the ass. Elle Jones, one of the astrologers behind the popular Twitter account, Oh My Stars, dreams of finding her soulmate. But she knows it most assuredly not Darcy, a no-nonsense stick in the mud who is way too analytical, punctual, and skeptical for someone like Elle. When Darcy's brother and Elle's new business partner expresses how happy he is that he, she and Darcy hit it off, Elle is baffled. Was Darcy on the same date? Because awkward. Darcy begs Elle to play along and she reluctantly agrees to pretend they're dating, but with a few conditions. Darcy must help Elle navigate her own overbearing family during the holidays, and their arrangement expires on New Year's Eve. The last thing they expect is to develop real feelings during a faux relationship, but maybe opposites can attract when true love is written in the stars. And this is a female-female romance, and it just, it sounds super cute. Sorry about the beeping and stuff. Xander is in the kitchen doing stuff. I think that was a microwave. And then the last book that I have here is uh, one that I pre-ordered from Barnes & Noble. And this is So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lutkins. And I believe this is a male-male romance. This says, Eric hadn't thought much about what would happen after he completed the prophecy that said he was destined to save the kingdom of air from its evil ruler. So now that he's finally managed to, somewhat clumsily, behead the evil king, turns out that magical swords yanked from boys, yanked from bogs, don't come pre-sharpened. 
and his ragtag group of quest companions are at a bit of a loss for what to do next. As a temporary safeguard, Eric's best friend and mage, Matt, convinces him to assume the throne until the true heir can be rescued from her tower. Except she's dead. Now Eric is stuck as king, a role that comes with a magical catch. Choose a soulmate by your 18th birthday or wither away into nothing. With his 18th birthday only three months away and only Matt in on the secret, Eric embarks on a desperate bid to find a spouse to save his life, starting with his quest companions. But his attempts at wooing his friends go painfully and hilariously wrong until he discovers that love might have been in front of him all along. And this sounds so stinking cute. Oh my goodness. Have you guys read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye.